Yeah, yeah, they were just knocked out plainly. So, not a very good performance, guys. We're definitely not impressed, right? So, we definitely need to pull up their socks. They do have a lot of pedigree, as I say, but it didn't really show in this year's AFCON. Hello everyone and welcome to today's episode of The Corner Flag and you're here with your favorite host once again, The Shane and as you all know, our episodes are shot at Islo Studios so if you are in Pretoria, you know where to get the plug if you are a media person and in today's episode of course, we will be talking about AFCON once again and in today's topic, we will be talking about the 5 biggest flops at the AFCON this year so there are some teams that usually whenever you see them in your group they strike fear into your hearts and yeah these guys are very underwhelming these guys are very underwhelming so we're just going to take a look at some of these guys um i think it's right to say that there were some teams that outperformed themselves or, or outperformed um, expectations teams like mauritania of course uh equatorial guinea south africa cabo verde you know namibia to some degree um yeah so there's quite a few teams that did well like they, they did better than we expected them to do even ivory coast they went all the way to winning and you know in the in, in the group stages they were almost this close this close to being knocked out so those are some teams that overperformed i'd say uh but let's take a look at the teams that i'd say underperformed and uh, starting at number five we're gonna go with tunisia guys Tunisia, does this team even deserve to be called a big team anymore? I believe that this pedigree is just based off of the fact that, you know, they're in North, North Africa, of course. They have big teams, of course, on the continent like Raha, Casablanca and whatever the case might be. But, hey, you know, <laughs> I think their performance was less to be des uh, uh, desired. They're in the same group as, of course, South Africa, um, Namibia, of course, as you mentioned earlier, as well as Mali. And how it ended was Mali came out first, South Africa second, uh, Namibia out third, and Tunisia, psh, yeah, they were just knocked out plainly. So, not a very good performance, guys. We're definitely not impressed, right? So, we definitely need to pull up their socks. They do have a lot of pedigree, as I say, but it didn't really show in this year's AFCON. And uh, the next team on our list, going in at number four, we're going to go with Algeria. Like, Algeria, guys, what is happening? The Desert Foxes this year were toothless. There was also got knocked out at the group stages, went out with the whimper, nothing to report, nothing amazing happened. We we're looking forward to seeing what Slimani, Mares, you know? <laughs> so it also went out with the whimper in this one. So I think definitely they need to, you know, do a little bit better. They do have some great players in their team. They have some great structures as well. Also have a lot of pedigree seeing as their North, uh, North African team. But uh, this time around, they don't really show us what they made of. And our next team is also a North African team. And we're going to go with Egypt. So Egypt, let's, I'll be a little bit funny on them as well. They did have quite a few issues. Um, Salah, of course, did not finish the tournament with them, got injured in the first half of the tournament and they had to go through without the talisman. But on the other hand, that actually shows you what happens whenever a team relies too much on one player. You know, it's like as soon as this player is not there, the whole game plan falls apart. Uh, there were some players who did try and raise their hands. You have your Egazi, Algazi, Egazi. <laughs> I'm not sure how, how it's pronounced, but yeah, he did, he did a good job. He's the captain, of course, uh, Trezeguet and all these other dudes. But yeah, they could have done a lot better. I mean, they have Al-Atli, the best team on the continent. So you still think that even if Salah's not there, they'll still be able to do something. Even considering the fact that Sundowns were able to go, uh, well, South Africa was able to go so far using mainly Sundowns players. So you would think that even if Egypt does have a few clearing issues, they'll still be able to patch it up seeing as the quality of the teams that they have is, is very, very good. Your know, athletes are in their pyramids, Zamalek, you name them, you know what I mean? Other than South Africa, we could probably say that Egypt boasts the best domestic league on the continent. So yeah, very underwhelming from the Egyptians, but there has been quite a few whimpers <laughs> previously as well. So yeah, can't really say too much about that. And coming in at number two, we're gonna go with Cameroon. Wow, Cameroon. Cameroon has fallen off 
so hard guys yo yo Cameroon has fallen off Cameroon used to be one of those teams like especially when Eto was playing I mean it seems like a long while ago <laughs> but even then they still had some really really good players your songs were in there and and, 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 and you know all sorts of other players were in there also but they just <sighs> it's like they kind of like what happened to a fun of fun you know but it's just on a grand scale just on a grand scale, there's so many things happening behind the scenes with them as well. Uh, Rigo song has been underperforming for so long, but because he has such a close relationship with Eto, yeah, you know, <laughs> hasn't got the axe, has been avoiding that. Uh, there has been some claims of corruption um, at the state, at the highest level as well, so that's not looking too good. Um, and well, yeah, I think it's just time for them to renew, you know, just go back to the dream board, guys. It's about time. The nice thing about Cameroon is they do have plenty of talent. Plenty, plenty, plenty of talent. They keep exporting talent, uh, you know, consistently, you know. So they always have a base to work around. They just need to like scrap, you know, all of these other projects. I do remember, I think the guy from like Five Aside also mentioned the fact that, you know, all of the older players, and I agree with, agree with him, you know, all of these guys, like your Chipo Moting was not there, of course, but you know, all of your older players in Cameroon, it's time to phase these guys out, get a younger, hungrier generation, and you know, start from the beginning. So yeah, Cameroon also very, very underwhelming, especially uh, considering the pedigree and how big of a team it is. I mean, even in their group, you'd assume that they'll come like first to second, but uh, yeah, no, riding on past glories. Um, looking at our number one spot, our number one most disappointing team is Ghana. Oh my God, the Black Stars also didn't make it out of round of 16. They have some great players as well. Kudus, oh, I just felt sorry for Kudus at this point because he played his heart out. You know, he played his heart out. A few other players played their hearts out, but overall, uh, the combination and it's just not working out, man. I feel like they also need renewal as well. Yo, I use Jordan is okay. He still plays. He still plays very, very well. But Dere, you know, he served his country well, man. I think it's time that they let somebody else uh, put in the reins at this point. As I did say, they do have a plethora, a plethora. These North African teams are just blessed whenever it comes to talent and you know where they, they their players are playing. They always play at the highest level, you know. So you don't really expect Ghana to be in the situation that they're in, but they're here and it's been happening for a while. So I think it's about time for them also to you know just rethink the whole strategy and yeah, just reconfigure, come up with a plan, guys. You guys are the Black Stars are at some point in time. These guys, at, especially at the World Cup, looking at the World Cup and how far they've digressed since then, they, this had a team that was a fighter. It was a fighter. I mean, they went to uh, the semi. Was it the semis in the 2010 World Cup? It wasn't the semis. Was it the semis? Oh, geez, I don't remember. But it, they went pretty far, right? They went pretty far, broke the hearts of all Africans. I think it was the semis. But they went, they went pretty far, and you know, our hearts got broken by Uruguay when Suarez, of course, decided to <laughs> become the second goalkeeper in the match. But he served his country well, Suarez, right? On the other side, in Uruguay, they were thinking, yo, this guy, he served us well. He, 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 he died for, for his country. And that's what we expect from our players as well. So I think Ghana has been missing that a little bit. Not from everyone, of course. As we did mention, there have been some brilliant players, but they do need to come up with another strategy. Uh, but yeah, that brings us to the end of our... Thank you so much for coming to today's video. If you are still here, thank you so much for sticking by. And please don't forget to like, share, subscribe. We are on our route to 500. And thank you for all of those who have subbed. I have been seeing those. It doesn't go unnoticed. And thank you for all of those who've been uh, supporting me with the views as well. I really appreciate those too. Until I see you next time in the episode of Corner Flag.